Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days. For today's video, day 10, it's going to take us to the 4th of April. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that when it's said GFS and ECM ensembles may run to around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and for April as well. I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that I'm not being able to release the videos as much as I would normally uh, like to do so at the moment due to all of the health crises that have been going on over the past few weeks with myself and with Mrs. P. She's still in the hospital, is getting better. Thank you so much, everybody, for your lovely, lovely messages of support. But she's still in hospital. Uh, I shall be in myself on Monday uh, to have a uh, tongue cancer removal, uh, uh, cancer removed off my tongue, as well as a neck dissection. So I'm having some pretty significant surgery next week. I think we're both going to be in hospital together, you know. <laughs> How unlucky is that, everybody? You ever heard that? Uh, you know, uh, mother and son uh, from the same house, like, in hospital at the same time. I don't know, but these things do happen, you know, these things do happen with people, and it's just one of those times. But, um, but yeah, it's all been going on, which has meant that I've not been able to do videos uh, anywhere near as much as I'd like to do so. And, uh, of course, from Monday, when I have my operation, videos uh, will be stopping, because, I, A, I won't be here, I'll be in hospital, so uh, that'll be the end of that. And then when I get out, I'm going to have, uh, you know, a bit of a recovery time uh, as well. I'm hoping to get it all back on track, you know, for you, so just watch your space, bear with me, and uh, hopefully I will We'll get it all back on track and uh, everything will be okay or will be way or be, or will be well fingers crossed um right okay uh, we are going to do another video on Sunday though and that will be the last one uh, for a while I think uh, this is our temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole set against the average. So temperatures are currently around minus 30. Uh, and at this time of year, coming towards the latter stages of March, it should be around minus 47, something like that. But if you go a little bit lower down to 30 HPA, there, there has been a very significant warming of the stratosphere. It's gone all the way, oh, we did go all the way up to around minus 25. We can't sustain that for all that long, so temperatures now are dropping, um, but, you know, that really soon was the end of this year's polar vortex, and after such a cold stratosphere temperature at 10 HP through most of the winter, when it was around minus 80, very significant, you know, but we've lifted those temperatures up to around minus 25 degrees, or we did do a few days ago. So, uh, these yellow and green colours are the warm temperatures in the stratosphere, uh, 10 HPA, they're going to continue, you know, over the uh, next few days as well. So the warm temperatures will be maintained. There's no sign of the cold temperatures, which is the polar vortex at its roots. There's no sign of, uh, of that returning over the next week or two. So so those green and yellow colours will stay there over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole as well. The, the warm temperatures will go on for the next week or two before, you know, gradually falling back towards climatology, I I suppose. All of this has sent zonal winds into reverse. So this from where is cool.com. We have seen a reversal of zonal winds. Zonal winds are now in reverse. And the GFS ensembles, the green line just there indicating that zonal winds will stay in reverse. This from University of Berlin showing both 10 and 30 HPA. The uh, blue line is uh, 10 HPA. The red line is 30 HPA. So zonal winds have reversed. I've already said at 10 HPA and will stay in reverse there. At 30 HPA, we haven't had a reversal of zonal winds yet but it's coming in the next week 10 days we will also see so the winds going into reverse at uh 38 as well that brings an end to this year's polar vortex it's done it's finished it's all over for the polar vortex uh, for this year and of course we wait to see whether we get a tropospheric response through blocking um to that warming Setting temperature is currently standing at 7.7 .7, which is 2.3 degrees uh above average that's provisional to yesterday December 24th of March. She's a GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to Birmingham today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. Uh, we're above average at the moment. We're going to get a cold snap though through the middle and second half of next week. And then we're going to see those upper air temperatures lifting up once again. Some of these ensemble members are still really cold. Some of them are going down to minus 10 at 858 HP. However, GFS and its ensembles is backing away, I think, from a significant cold 
period. Other mods are still going for it. You're going to see those in a moment. But the GFS is backing away from a significantly extended cold period. Although, and, and you know, very quickly warm things up. So it gets colder for two or three days later next week with the GFS at the moment. And then things um, very quickly start to warm up. Precipitation-wise, it's going to be a lot of dry weather over the uh, next few days. And then we'll gradually get more unsettled through the latter part of next week. And particularly through the first week, 10 days of, of April, we'll get significantly more unsettled. And it could be in for really quite a wet start to April, actually. That first week to 10 day period just here. It is extended rain, so it's unreliable. But that week, to, first week to 10 day period of April could turn significantly uh, wetter, actually. Temperature anomaly is on the 25th of March to the 2nd of April are going to be uh, warmer than average. Precipitation anomaly is on the 25th of March to the 2nd of April. They're going to be uh, driving average, particularly to more western and southwestern areas. The latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows high pressure will be sitting over the top of the country, or is sitting over the top of the country at the moment, as has been all week. And we'll continue to do so through the next few days as well. This is how the latest UK Met Euro run is looking for uh, midnight on Monday with a big area of high pressure dominating the weather. And then as we go through the middle to second half next week, that high pressure tries to go north. We do pull some colder air into the anti-cyclone, but it doesn't turn particularly wintry. It just, just turns colder under the high and uh, with a risk of overnight frost and, 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 and that sort of stuff. But not not much in the way of snow, I wouldn't have thought, from uh, that. Icon uh, looks like this. Again, under high pressure on Monday, brings a lot of dry and mild weather with it. Then the high pressure goes north through the middle of next week. Centres over Greenland ice, we start to pull in. means colder winds from the uh, east and from the northeast as well. Uh, uh, and this is, like, uh, uh, this is like a much colder scenario compared to what the UK Met is doing. This is bringing in like proper north East is and then deliver snow showers into eastern parts of the country as well. And all the way up to the end of next week, Friday 1st of April, that high pressure is keeping the lows at bay. The lows want to bring milder air and rain in from off the Atlantic, but the high pressure holding it at bay and still pulling in those east to north easterly winds. And uh, they could well bring some snow showers. Uh, with them to particularly more northern and eastern areas. The GFS Midnight Run, again, has the area of high pressure in control of the weather through the uh, early part of next week, and then the low pressure moves in from off the Atlantic, brings unsettled weather. But no, notice through the second half of next week, the high pressure is nowhere near as extensive around green as like Icon has it. Look at the difference on Thursday next week with the GFS Midnight Run compared to Icon. So there's Icon, much Bit stronger heights, you know, much stronger blocking to the north on Thursday next week with Icon compared to the GFS. So the GFS is, is wetter for the same half next week, definitely brings more rain, but it's also milder as, as the blocking is very significantly and substantially uh, reduced. Moving into the first weekend of April, further outbreaks of rain along with this very mild southwesterly wind as well, and we keep it unsettled right way through the extended range. Winds go into the north and to the northeast by the middle of the uh, uh, right, following week, so this is 6th of April, uh, we are bringing in colder north northeasterly winds there for a while anyway, and still looking quite unsettled. We finish up looking like that with a little bit of a transient ridge building from the southwest. The GFS 6Z, again, with high pressure in control of the weather. Open next week, then there's a change to low pressure, bringing wet and windy weather, but not overly cold weather. Uh, the GFS 6Z is also relatively uh, mild, really, and until towards the end of next week, when perhaps we try and pull something a little bit cold in from the north, but never really making it. Um, that's a significant area of low pressure there around uh, certainly the 3rd of April. That's bringing gale force winds and uh, heavy outbreaks of rain with it. And the unsettled weather just keeps going, really, right way up to the end of the uh, uh, of the uh, sixth set as well. Gets us to Sunday, the 10th of April, when we're continuing to look wet and windy. GM, again, with high pressure dominating through the early part of next week. Then the high pressure moves northwards. Low pressure moving in from the southwest. That's bringing outbreaks of rain. Trying to pull in some colder air with that area of high pressure. I think we do bring some colder uh, air into, in, in, into the low uh, from, from the blocking area of high pressure around green and ice. It's a complex setup through next week. So quite what happens, the devil will be in the detail, quite what happens, you know, in terms of how cold it gets and, and, and so on. 
you know, that all that, that is all going to remain to be seen. But by the end of the, G, of the GM, we're actually bringing up a very mild southerly wind. With low pressure out to the west, we're bringing up this very mild, or even quite warm, southerly wind. But plus 10 cells isotherm there is getting close to the southeast of England. So plenty of rain with that, but also pretty warm temperatures as well. So that's another solution from the GM. And then the uh, ECM looks like this. High pressure is in the ascendancy through the early part of uh, next week. Becomes a blocking feature around Greenland and Iceland. Middle of next week, colder air pushing in from an east or a northeast direction. Down comes the minus 5 Celsius isotherm. There could be rain and snow involved in the transition. The ECM is like icon, really. Uh, a significantly colder solution. Uh, we've got G GFS looking uh, generally milder in the second half next week. Um, UK next summer in between, in between. So there's a lot of questions to answer about next week and whether it will get cold or not. But the ECM is definitely like one of the colder solutions today, bringing in these easy winds and make deliver snow showers to eastern parts of the country. And the ECM keeps it cold pretty much up to day 10, to be honest. So by then, the high pressure begins to weaken a little bit. With all this low pressure out in the Atlantic, we probably start moving that in and we'll be bringing some outbreaks of rain in uh, with that before too much longer. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So initially, lots of dry weather. Early next week, some showers break out, especially in the north. And then the showery rain gets more widespread through the second half next week. Some snow included in that. Uh, this is 31st of uh, March, which I think is next Thursday. Uh, rain, sleet, snow, no, wintry mix through Ireland, England and Wales. Wintry showers, snow showers across Scotland uh, as well. And uh, then we pull in those easy winds. They bring plenty of snow showers uh, with them as well. And that carries on all the way up to day 10. This is the option on the table. Vimy ECM Ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 4th of April. 51 members of the ECM Ensembles, all of them have low pressure out to the west, higher pressure weakening and retreating away to the north. So you will think this low pressure is about to start coming in from the Atlantic, bringing both rain and also milder temperatures by day 10. And then that's the option that we've got for uh, two weeks' time, which is the 9th of April. So well, these are the options that we've got. 28 members of the ECM Ensembles with low pressure in off the Atlantic. That's bringing plenty of rain, relatively mild weather with it. 23, again, with low pressure, just a little bit weaker, slightly to our north and northwest. But they both look pretty unsettled. They both bring spells of rain with them. CFSV2, uh, finally, uh, 500 millibar high tolerance breakdown to week peers. The first week period will take us from the 25th to the 31st of March. The coming week will have high pressure dominating over slightly to the west of the country. That brings lots of dry weather with it. It will start to turn cooler with time. Week 2 will be the 1st and the 7th of April. Low pressure in off the Atlantic. That will bring outbreaks of rain with it. High pressure is over Greenland. Not particularly cold uh, with that. Uh, week 3 is going to be the 8th to the 14th of April. Low pressure is over the country. High pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. And we'll pull in a cold northwesterly uh, wind. And then week 4 is going to be the 15th to 21st of April with low pressure over and to the east of the country. And we'll be bringing down a cold northerly or northeasterly. So getting colder through April, if anything, uh, if the CFS is right today. Uh, temperature normally look like this for week one, 25th to 31st of March. Milder than average, or well, an average week coming up. Then the temperature normally goes near normal, 1st to the 7th of April. About average with a temperature anomaly then. Week 3 temperature normally from the 8th to the 14th of April, near normal to slightly below average. And then week 4 from the 15th to 21st of April, going to be colder than average. So it gets colder if CFS is right as April progresses. Uh, finally, CFS for April itself is a 700 millibar high to normally, showing some high pressure down towards Spain, low pressure into the north of Scotland, and there's some blocking around as well. It's a complex setup, but I think it's this trough of low pressure over northern Europe, really, that would start to pull in some probably quite chilly air from the uh, north and from the northwest. The temperature anomaly is forecast to be below, uh, to be average um, for the UK and Ireland for April, but below average temperature on as much of northern Europe with that trough of low pressure. And the precipitation anomaly in April is, is again, only around average. Uh, but I would have thought, like, quite an unsettled month would be likely there based on the 700 millibar height anomaly. Okay, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. As I say, the uh, videos will be disappearing. 
Um, after Sony, I'm going to do one more video on Sony about being my last one then for quite a while, I think. I don't know how long it's going to take to recover from this operation. It's a significant operation, so it will take a significant, you know, recovery period, I think. So, um, the last video will be coming up on Sony, and then that will be it. I'm so sorry uh, about that. You know, 10 years I have gone without having a, uh, extended break, but, um... This is an enforced extended break that I am going to have. But it is with great regret. You know, I, w I wish I didn't have to do it because I'm a workaholic and I just love, love doing the videos. I, you know, I love doing the videos. I love doing the weather. It's my life. It's my job. Um, it's my passion. Um, it's what, it's my calling, I think. It's what, I, it's, you know, it's what, it's what Gab does. And, you know, I've got to stop. And I'm so sorry that, that that's going to happen. Uh, and I just asked, uh, I am going to get it back on track. You know, I'm determined that I'll get it all back on track. But I just ask that you you just bear with me for a while um, and, uh, and, and, and you know, let me have my uh, operation and, and hopefully then that's the end of treatment. And then, um, you know, uh, we'll be able to, to pick up again later on in the year. I'm hoping for, for, for a return for June. I don't know if that's realistic or not, really. But that's what I'm uh, aiming for anyway. Because when you're in this sort of situation, you have to have aims and goals, um, you know, to, 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 in, in, you, to, to, to drive you to carry on uh, with the fight and whatnot. So, um, so that's my aim, to have it all back on track uh, by June. If it's not realistic, then, then we'll have to think again. But hopefully it will be anyway there will be one more weather video for you that i'll be releasing on sunday and uh and then it will be time to stop and um and uh and time to say goodbye for a while but one more video coming up on sunday right you enjoy the rest of your friday that's all for now and thanks for watching